Breaking news from Detroit's east side. Police are on the scene of a double shooting where one person has died. The shooting took place at Manfield Auto Parts on East 7 Mile right near Mansfield. We are working to gather more information and we'll bring it to you as soon as we get it. Also tonight, the Dearborn Heights police on perv patrol. Three men have been caught pleasuring themselves in public in the last week. Now police want to know, is this a coincidence or something more sinister at play? Fox News' Jessica Dubnik joins us now with more on where these guys have been spotted so far. Jessica. Yeah, we're talking about three different guys, three different locations, but one common theme. They all happened here in Dearborn Heights. Investigators here at Dearborn Heights Police, they are leaning towards this not being a coincidence. They're actually looking into the theory that maybe it's some social media forum, even a social media challenge, if you will, getting guys here to do the unthinkable. The individual was found to be naked in his car, uh, pleasuring himself in the parking lot. Not one, not two, but three different men doing the same creepy thing in one week, all in Dearborn Heights. One caught on camera. What the f is he doing? You know, anytime you get these these reports of something very similar like this, yes, there is no coincidence. When this guy was spotted, he opened the door to his blue Honda CRV, no shame, fully nude. And get this, it was in the parking lot of a school, OW Best Middle School, on Sunday. This is very. Yeah. Harold Pegler and his pup butt kiss walking in Heinz Park near Telegraph, where one of the three men was caught in his car, door open, naked, masturbating on Monday. Sounds like one of those quote TikTok challenges. Harold, with this stroke of genius, investigators are actually looking into his theory that some kind of online forum is encouraging guys to pleasure themselves, specifically in Dearborn Heights. One of the three has been arrested. A 45 year old man was handling himself. A block from Annapolis High School last week, caught with meth and a cucumber. He's now charged. I want to say we've been fortunate nobody's been, you know, victimized or kids, but that's just by sheer luck, and we don't like playing by sheer luck. It's why Dearborn Heights PD has beefed up patrol since they noticed the trend. I have zero problem telling you that there are unmarked units uh, in these areas and some areas that we have some intel on and we're going to keep pursuing that neighboring cities on alert too to keep a heads up for these sexual deviants. Uh, that's something to basically keep to yourself behind closed doors. Paul, Paul Vanderplow here with Dearborn Heights Police. You heard from him in this story. He's very thankful that they had video of one of those suspects to work off of, but he's asking the public, if you ever see something like this, yes, grab some video, but if you can get a plate that is extra helpful in these investigations. Reporting live in Dearborn Heights, Jessica Dupnack. Fox 2 News. Right. You see something, say something. That's certainly something to see. But what we're worried most about are the kids. I mean, there's, you know, it's happening in the day and there are young people around too. For sure. And two of the three incidents happened by schools. Again, not a coincidence. Uh, and as we said, only one of these guys has been caught. So definitely Dearborn Heights, surrounding communities. Keep an eye out. All right, Jessica. Thanks. <laughs> As the UAW strike is about to enter its third week, Ford announces new layoffs and it impacts local workers. 350 workers at Livonia Transmission and 50 workers at Sterling Axel are being asked not to report to work tomorrow. The automaker says the layoffs are all because of the strike at the Chicago assembly plant. In the meantime, the automaker says it has made its seventh offer, which includes what it calls record pay and benefits. That includes a worker pay raise of more than 20 percent, also cost of living allowances for inflation, additional all tiers would be eliminated. Average new hires would earn six figures by the fourth year. Temporary employees would be included in profit sharing and full ratification bonus. Ford says this is the strongest offer the company has made since August 29th. Well, meanwhile, Stellantis appears to be making meaningful progress. An anonymous source told the Associated Press that offers have been exchanged and talks are going favorably. Meanwhile, GM announced it secured a $6 billion line of credit as a braces for additional strikes. Well, tempers flare tonight in Melvindale. Mm, yes, it comes right after a funeral for a star high school athlete was canceled and the public wanted answers. This was a police matter governed by our Public Safety Commission. Our police chief... I asked you... Ask you, to, no, I I answer answer you. you I'm talking to you. Don't disrespect me. Don't disrespect me. 
Last month, ECOR senior Donald Camp was shot and killed at 4th Street and Outer Drive. His family had planned a funeral in Melvindale, but the service was canceled with concerns over possible violence. Police resources were reportedly slim with Melvindale's homecoming going on at the same time. Kemp's funeral did go on at a separate location. Tonight, the city's police chief took to the podium to offer an apology. Several weapons were recovered from the home. One of the weapons we believe was used in the incident. One day after an eight-year-old boy was shot by an unsecured gun in a home in Detroit, his father has been charged in connection to the shooting. We're told he's in custody for second-degree child neglect. The child was shot yesterday inside a home on Snowden Street, but it's not clear who fired the gun. Three other kids were in the home. Four adults in the house were asleep. Detroit police are encouraging all gun owners to store their weapons in a lockbox. We're learning, learning graphic new details in a domestic violence murder out of Warren. 56-year-old Ricardo Orozoco is accused of stabbing his wife to death. We're told the crime was discovered at a gas station on Mound late Saturday night when the suspect told the clerk a woman was bleeding in his car. Further investigation revealed the couple spent time at a beach in Caseville earlier in the day and the victim's body was soaking wet, had sand on it, and appeared to have been dragged through some brush. The suspect appeared intoxicated while being interviewed by police and made multiple admissions to killing his wife. He was given a $2 million bond. Well, a trial date has now been set. James and Jennifer Crumbly will stand trial for involuntary manslaughter beginning January 23rd. Prosecutors argue that parents of the Oxford High School shooter were grossly negligent when they bought their son the gun used in the massacre. They're also accused of ignoring requests to address his mental health. Just yesterday, the Michigan State Supreme Court rejected the couple's appeal request for the case to be thrown out. This is one of the rare cases that prosecutors have issued charges to hold parents responsible for their child's criminal act. Tomorrow, a hearing is set to start looking at the sexual harassment allegations against former MSU football coach Mel Tucker. The Title IX hearing will look at whether Tucker violated the school's sexual misconduct policy in his communications with Brenda Tracy. The fallout was swift for Tucker. He was fired last month after the story first broke. Tucker now plans to sue the university. The search is on tonight for a new Speaker of the House following the historic vote to remove Kevin McCarthy. And one prominent and controversial Republican has emerged as a possible candidate. A lot of people have been calling me about Speaker. All I can say is we'll do whatever's best for the country. Yep, surprise is Donald Trump. You don't need to be a sitting member of Congress to become Speaker. However, Trump says his focus is running for president. The vote for president or vote for speaker isn't expected to begin until next Wednesday at the earliest, but Congressman Garrett Graves, a Kevin McCarthy ally, tells Fox the party is so divided the vote could take weeks. I think this whole narrative about every member of existing leadership taking one step up is bull****. Well, there you go. So far, two Republicans have thrown their name into the hat. Republican Majority Leader Steve Scalise and House Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan have officially entered the race. All good things must come to an end, my friends. After a week of warm weather and sunshine, we're actually going in the opposite direction. Yeah, we were pretty spoiled. Rich Luterman has more on our cooler and wetter forecast ahead. Rich. Uh, Tan Roop, you know, it couldn't last, and we all knew that. We had a great run here. Today, we topped out at 82 degrees with more clouds. Our next cold front is in the western Great Lakes. Notice heavy rains over parts of Oklahoma, North Texas, parts of Arkansas as well. For us, we have a good chance to see afternoon rain showers tomorrow and Thursday evening. You can see that next frontal boundary uh, giving rise to some showers north of Grand Rapids up around Cadillac and Gaylord as well. It's going to be dry here for the rest of tonight. How about these daytime highs? 84 Chicago, 83 for the tip of the thumb, 82 for us. Even way up there in Newberry, 76 degrees. But you can see that green shade on the edge of the screen. That's where the cooler air is. So the numbers today, 82 and 64. That's a good 15 degrees above where we should be. Not close to a record. That record today, 89, set way back in 1951. Still very mild out there. 
this evening. 61 Ann Arbor, 70 in Pontiac, 70 in Port Huron, 71 to our south in Monroe. It's a southerly breeze and uh, it's going to be sticking around uh, this southerly breeze for the next 24 hours and that's why it's going to stay mild even with some afternoon rain showers tomorrow. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some more numbers uh, across the Great Lakes. My remote control has frozen up once again. I thought we were over this problem, Bobby. Uh, let's see if we can get it going. If not, then we're going to visit the seven day forecast uh, at the end of the show. Let's do that. Let's just uh, go back to Roop and Tarn and we'll get the seven day uh, coming up in 15. Oh, wait a minute. Now the kids can see that they're not trying to harm them. Right. They're here to help us. It makes me feel good at my age and everything that the kids are willing to participate. Before the weather cools down, there was time for one last walk a mile Wednesday. Detroit police officers hit the streets all summer long, hoping to engage with the community. The hope is to prevent crime and build trust with the people they serve. But what's really awesome for the officers to see is just the support that we have from the community. They all come out, they, they, they walk with us. Community engagement will continue for months to come. DPD has plans at all precincts for Halloween and more events for the holidays.